now that we have the um, elastic beanstalk environment ready to go and the health is, is good, what we need to do is we need to create some uh, create a, a user basically with some permissions in order to access this. Um, and what we're going to do is take that user and basically map that user to our IDE, which is NetBeans, um, so that we can have a connection there and be able to just push our application right from NetBeans into our environment and run it that way. So what, what we need to do is we need to go to the uh, AWS, um, uh, I guess, permissions service, which is, if we uh, go to services, we can just go console home, and then we can go to the uh, IAM secure AWS access control. And again, all this does is just create some groups and some users with some permissions. Um, it looks a little bit daunting, but it, it, it's really not that bad. Um, so I've already created a group, and uh, I just called it test group. Great name, right? <laughs> and um, I have two users in that group, uh, Tyler and Bob. Um, so uh, and, and so basically what I can do is if I, if I go here to groups, click on the group, I can go to permissions and I can set up some permissions for this group that's called test group. And then when I add users to this group, test group, they will inherit the permissions of the group. So, um, and, and the, the permissions that you're going to want to add so that people can actually access this, this, the uh, Elastic Beanstalk instance is um, I would say probably a, a safe uh, user access is, is the power user access. So let me walk you through how to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and just remove this policy. It's not going to hurt anything. And then I'm going to do attach new policy. And I'm attaching this policy to the, the test group. And so what I want to do is, and, and I can, so I can go in here and select different policy templates. I can generate my own template. I can do a custom uh, policy. Typically, this is going to be just fine. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to select Power User Access for my users. And it actually shows me a JSON representation here, and I can actually tweak this if I want to, but I'm not going to. I'm just, and I can rename it if I want. But this looks fine, so I'm going to do Apply Policy. <clears throat> so that will apply this policy to the group. Now my users will. Uh, and so if we go here to the Users tab, and I click on Tyler, and it shows me the group, which is Test Group. I can do Permissions, and see I've inherited the group permissions. Now, one other, uh, so, so once we have the permissions set up, then what we need to do is grant access to uh, the instance. And the way to do that, there, you can do a username and password, but the, the way that uh, we need to do it uh, for our IDE is through access keys. As you can see, I have, uh, an access key active, but Bob doesn't. So Bob is going to be our guinea pig here. So we're going to take Bob, and we're going to give him some security credentials. And um, so the way to do that is in security credentials, um, we basically just do manage access keys, and we're going to create an access key. And one thing that's very, very important to remember about this is that um, it's going to ask you to download this access key and it's very difficult to get a copy of this access key again. So the idea is if you're distributing these access keys to different people maybe that are on a team, make sure they know that they need to take care of this key and they need to make sure that it's saved and backed up and it's secure because it's hard to get another key. So we'll do download credentials and this, and this, is, gonna, um, this is gonna save this in a, uh, a, a .csv format, which is basically uh, something, it's a, 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 a commerce separated uh, value format, which is popular with tabular data like, uh, like Excel. But we can view it with a, basically with a, um, uh, an editor. So, um, by the way, user Bob will be deleted on my account by the time you're wa you've watched this, so don't, uh, don't try to hack me. Uh, but in any case, so now we have a key and that key was saved to our desktop. So let's go ahead and go to our desktop. And here's our key. And then let's, let's just open this with a, a text editor. So I'll just use text edit and open this up. 
Now, as you can see, we have basically two keys. We have an access key ID, and then we have a secret access key. So uh, you've got, and, and, and then obviously username. So we have Bob, here's his uh, you know, key ID, and then here's his access key. So now what we need to do is take this information and add uh, and add that instance that, or that environment that we created to NetBeans. So we'll open NetBeans and we'll go into our services tab. And then uh, in our services tab, in cloud, we can actually just right click on cloud and do add cloud. And as you can see, Amazon Beanstalk is, is pre-configured in here. So I'm going to uh, put here, I'm going to say this is Bob's Amazon Beanstalk. And this will, uh, since Bob is a part of that group, um, and that group has access to the, the test group, and that group has access to basically all the services, Bob will be able to have access to the Elastic Beanstalk. So we want to create a, a Bob's Elastic Beanstalk account because then he'll get access to each of the environments that are within that. So we'll do next. Now, one thing that's important here is to specify the region correctly. The, way, the place to find that information is uh, in your AWS account. So if we go back here to AWS, we, we uh, and, and uh, so you, you may look here and be a little confused because it says global. Uh, what it's referring to is it's, it's actually referring to the, the, envi the, uh, the Elastic Beanstalk environment. So if we go to our Elastic Beanstalk uh, and, and look here, this shows us where our, uh, our region is, which ha for me happens to be Oregon. So um, once we have that information, which, which is Oregon, that's our region, okay, we can come here and select it in the drop down, okay. Then what we can do is come to our text file and get the access key. So we'll copy that. We'll paste it in here. And then we'll get the uh, secret access key. So it's everything up to the comma. We'll paste that. We'll do next. And as you can see, it found all three of our environments. Okay, so that's good. So we'll do finish. Okay, so now we have Bob's account and, and, and Tyler's account, my account. But if we go to servers, now as you can see, we have all of the, uh, the servers here that are listed under the Amazon accounts. Uh, and, and then plus the, the local Glassfish server. So that's how we integrate um, AWS into um, the Amazon uh, Elastic Beanstalk.